Hello, fourth year students. I would like to commence this lecture series with the celebrated novel, The Old Man and the Sea by Ernest Hemingway. So let's get started. Before we start, please read through the character list of the story. The characters include Santiago, Manolin, Martin, Rogelio, Perico, Marlin, Marco, Shovel-Nosed Sharks, Pedrico, and Tourists. The Old Man and the Sea is one of the Hemingway's most enduring works. Told in language of great simplicity and power, it is a story of an old Cuban fisherman down on his luck, and a supreme ordeal, a relentless, agonizing battle with a giant marlin far out of the Gulf Stream. Here, Hemingway recasts in strikingly contemporary style the classic theme of courage in the face of defeat, of personal trump won from loss. Written in 1952, this hugely successful novella confirmed his power and presence in the literary world and played a large part in his winnings in the 1954 Nobel Prize for Literature. The old man whose name is Santiago is a fisherman who lives alone near Havana. Incredibly poor, he sleeps in a shack and sets out each day on a small skiff to try to catch himself some fish to eat or sell. For a while, the boy named Menolin accompanied the old man each day to learn from him and assist him. Unfortunately, the old man went weeks without catching anything, so the boy's parents made him stop accompanying the old man. When the story begins, the boy is probably around 12 years old, and the old man has gone 84 days without catching a fish. The boy comes to his shack to talk to the old man about baseball, as they both greatly admire Joe DiMaggio, and supplies the old man with what he might need. The boy likes to bring the old man whatever he can, such as food, bait, and clothing. He also helps the old man carry his heavy mast and sail out to his boat each morning. They drink a cup of coffee together before the old man heads out on his skiff alone. On this particular day, the old man decides to venture out farther than he normally would. He sees a bird, which leads him to some flying fish. He is able to catch a tuna, which he eats before he notices a deep line has something big on it. Gingerly, he allows the line out in order to let the fish swallow the hook more deeply before he tugs to secure it. From the way the fish pulls the entire boat, the old man knows he has a very large catch. While waiting to reel it in, the old man uses a smaller line to snag a dolphin, which contains two flying fish inside of it. He eats much of these fish to keep up his strength as reeling in the big fish takes him more than two days. He fights the need for sleep and his fatigue of constantly keeping hold of the line before the fish finally starts to circle the boat. When the fish, which he estimates is two feet longer than the boat, is close enough, the old man stabs him with his harpoon to kill him. Then he uses most of his rope to tie the fish to the side of the boat so that he can bring him to the shore. The old man lets the current take him, but he fears that sharks will sniff out the blood of the dying fish, which they do. The first shark takes a hefty bite before the old man stabs him with the harpoon. The next two sharks take off about a quarter of the catch before they die, taking the old man's harpoon with them. The old man fashions a new harpoon by attaching his knife to a broken oar stick. He uses this weapon on the next shark to arrive, but unfortunately, the knife breaks when he goes to remove it from the shark's skull. Later that night, when a whole group of sharks arrive, Santiago must blindly swing at them with his oar and tiller, but it is of no use. They eat what's left for the catch. The man reaches the shore and must drag his mast and sail home despite his lacerated hands and exhaustion. The boy finds him the next morning and cries for what has happened to the old man. Other fishermen measured the skeleton and found it was 18 feet long. Even though the old man successfully caught up and could prove what he had done, he got nothing for it. In the novel, Santiago frequently dreams about lions on the beach. The first time is on the eve of his fishing expedition. The second one happens when he sleeps amidst his tussle with the marlin, while the third occurs at the end of the novel. The lions appear at his cup, symbolizing his youth. When the later appear as adults, they signify great nobility and strength. This provides Santiago with motivation, ambition and vitality that led him toward accomplishing his purpose. These dreams suggest life circular nature, the harmony between opposing forces of nature, which are love and hate, life and death, and destruction and regeneration. The main theme of the story is heroism. Santiago makes up for his age with his endurance to withstand hunger, pain and isolation. He does not blame the sharks for snatching the marlin, but he acknowledges that it is his mistake to have ventured far inward into the sea. As a fisher who has caught no fish in 84 days, Santiago is fighting against defeat. 
However, he does not yield because he moves further into the sea than he has ever sailed before. He struggles with the marlin despite his exhaustion and pain. After catching it, he hopelessly fights off the sharks. Whenever the situation gets difficult and he's threatened with despair, he uses various tactics to stimulate his opposition to defeat. He recollects memories of his strength while he was young through dreams and sometimes prays to God. Santiago has unlimited potentialities in the presence of danger. His potential is realized when he manages to get the giant Marlin. However, the outcome is less significant than the struggle as he also chooses to battle with the sharks. As a result, it is not really important that he brings the Marlin home. The important thing is that he wins the battle and after the struggle, he becomes a hero. The story's black hole is, a man can be destroyed but not defeated. Santiago symbolizes every man's battle to survive. Just like Santiago's attempt to take the mall into the mainland intact is unsuccessful. No man can escape death. However, through Santiago's struggle, the author illustrates escaping from death is not the major concern. Santiago sees the words, a man can be destroyed but not defeated, close to the end of his tussle with the Marlin. This is to say, victory over the unavoidable does not define a man. Rather, it is his struggle against the inevitable that defines him. And such is the beauty of this story. Moving ahead, I have made a list of some of the most inspiring lines taken from the text of this book. And lastly, these are some of the most important questions pertaining to this novel. Please work on them.